Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Red Raptor Writes. Today we are back with Dead Sounds Dinosauria series, which, uh, sorry, it's been a while on this one. I got so caught up with the Life on Our Planet review, and then the Paleo Myth on pack hunting raptors, and it's just been one thing after another, and all those Land Before Time reviews, which we're finally done with all 14 of them, and it was painful towards the end. I, I just got distracted from this, even though I was very much enjoying Dead Sounds Dinosauria series. I've seen these before, you will notice I give them likes, you'll see I have viewed them already. Uh, I'm now subscribed to Dead Sound, you guys mentioned I should do that. And yeah, he really deserves it because these are amazing short films that he made all the way back in 2021, so I'm getting old. I don't remember too much of what happens in each episode because I watched them as they were coming out three years ago. But I definitely remember how good the science has been. Uh, Dead Sound has been nailing every dinosaur of the sets. The pieces are beautiful. I mean, old Buck was like, I'm playing Ghost of Tsushima with the uh, blossoms and all that stuff, all the coloration. It was, it's amazing sometimes. It's astounding. Um, so, again, these aren't necessarily 100% accurate, but that's okay because they have artistic license. If it helps the short film be a better short film, then I don't mind. But I do want to go back and look at how each of them hold up in terms of the science and what they do, how they portray the science of dinosaurs. And again, I'm not here to be on my high horse. I don't really have a high horse to ride on in this case. You know, uh, I don't have a degree. So rather than a review, maybe we can look at this as um, a watch party where we enjoy it together and point out the science and have fun with it. So with that out of the way, let's dig this up. Let's get started. Okay. And as always, I will have to pause and comment over it and be a little annoying just so YouTube doesn't hit me with the copyright. So um, if you want to watch the full video, link is down in the description. Please do that before you watch this. Give him your view. Uh, and you'll see it without my annoying commentary over it. Okay, oh, this is a cool artistic opening here. Beautiful. <laughs> I really like this, what he's doing with it. So the main subject of this video is Lambiosaurus. It looks like we have some Parasaurolophus. And what am I looking at here in the background? Hypacosaurus or other Lambiosauruses? Okay, I think I think they're meant to be other Lambiosauruses, which is interesting. You have some sexual dimorphism in here. <laughs> Good Parasaurolophus call. I like that sound effect with the beak closing. It's cool. Oh, and just this beautiful design. Oh my gosh. I love this. The reds and the browns and oranges mix, mix perfectly on this. It looks like an animal that could exist and should exist. And I want it. Huh, so... Maybe that was Caritasaurus before. Because, uh... Sorry, we're only 41 seconds in. Um, there might have been Caritasaurus before, because Lambiosaurus has, like, this handle on the back of its head, and then, like, a mitten glove shape. It looks like a hatchet altogether, where Caritasaurus is more of just, like, a round crest over it. So, that was probably Caritasaurus. My mistake. I'm figuring it out as I go. It's been a long time for me. Feet. Good. Finally. <laughs> Good Hadrosaur feet. Um, hoofed. Second, third, and fourth digit. The fifth digit does stick out. And then the three ornithopods, bird feet, in the back. Oh, that is beautiful. All right, let's do this one last time. Let the bodies hit the...
Dead Sound is really good at capturing the, the majesty, the beauty of dinosaurs. And it's very easy to do when you're working with these, uh, these amazing hadrosaurids. They're very charismatic. Oh, the Tarantino shot? Alright. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, we have flowers! Awesome! Okay, so we see Caritosaurus seems to be sexually dimorphic. They have a, a larger male with more coloration on it, and a smaller female with less colors. And they are very similar animals. I'm not sure if they're sister taxa to one another, if they're each other's closest relative, but they are extremely similar. Again, you look for that hatchet in the back for Lambiosaurus. And for a lot of Hadrosaurids, you don't really know what you have until you have a skull. They're, Past the skull, they seem very similar, um, especially in such close Lambiosaurines. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> and I have a rock. That's good. You know, if you're lonely in life, just get a rock, alright? Who needs love? He has his rock. Oh, oh okay. Okay. And we have the thick-necked parasaurol office. Um, spoiler, I just got done watching Disney's Dinosaur, where they still have the skinny dinosaur renaissance necks. And I'll be reviewing Disney's Dinosaur soon. Uh, I, I actually really liked it, so I'm not trying to throw shade at it. Um, but you have that thick parasaurol office neck, because we found that uh, they have a ligament running from the back of the head, like, up to the kind of end of the back here when it transitions into the neck. So I probably would have had, instead of a skinny neck, this big, fleshy, meaty neck. And it has, like, this nice swan-like... These swan-like vertebrae to spine going up. And we thought it was skinny, covering it. But no, it's much fleshier. And the skeleton, the spine, is, like, buried in all this flesh. And we see some sexual dimorphism here, too. Which, um, I'm not sure if that's a thing. <laughs> we don't have a lot of parasaurol office, but it seems like the ones that look like this are a different species, or this would be P. walkeri. This would be P. Cristatus, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and this would be a more southern species in, like, New Mexico-ish, I believe. Oh, well, this is, uh, I think this takes place in Alberta, Canada, overall. So it's not really a sexual dimorphism thing between these two. It's more of a speciation kind of thing here. But, hold on. Again, still, I love I love the look of it. It looks great. And uh, it's a very cool idea of dinosaur sexual dimorphism. But, uh, you know, it's not perfectly scientific, or at least we can't prove that it's sexual dimorphism yet. Uh, but, again, you have the artistic license. It looks great. I'm loving it so far. Oh, dinosaur love. Oh, uh. <laughs> Dang, me too, buddy. Me too. Man, when you're finally about to clap cheeks and the Gorgosaurus just shows up and blocks you. <laughs> I have a story like this once. I wasn't gonna clap cheeks, but I did get blocked super hard once. I was, uh, <laughs> uh, me and my friends joke about this to this day. We were, had a big Six Flags trip together, and my friend brought their girlfriend, and then we had a connection there. And we we're gonna sit next to each other in the car ride back, but then my friend just sat right in between us in the back of the van and <laughs> blocked me so hard. No, anyway, it's all it's all ancient history, you know. I hope she's doing well, but uh, does you know? <laughs> I know what it's like to lose, to feel desperately that you're right, just to fail all the same. Oh man, and I like the it has like this Jaws effect where when there's barely any red in the environment, as uh, what Steven Spielberg did. When there's barely any red, once there's that splash of blood, it stands out. It doesn't, like, blend in with the rest of it. It, it sticks out so much, and your brain just like, oh my gosh, the blood. 
Um, yeah, good notes from Steven Spielberg. <laughs> Jaws is my favorite movie, so better do it right. Okay, so we have... Ooh, that's a very nice design. We have an Ankylosaurid or Ankylosaurian of some description. Very cute. Oh, it's a cute little baby. It's a cute little baby. They're so cute. Uh, Alright, so it has a tail club. What am I looking at here? Is this like uh, Euplocephalus? Maybe? I think so. I don't know. It's an Ankylosaurid of some description. And here's Chasmosaurus getting ready to clap. Oh, and I like the quills on Chasmosaurus here. That's nice. It's uh, very much reminiscent of uh, Cetacosaurus that had the quills on its tail. And that's in the same lineage as Ceratopsian. This is a much more derived later form. That was a small bipedal herbivore from Asia. But uh, maybe it had quills. Maybe it still had quills. Could have used, been used for display or for defense of some sort. But it's flush in its skull. Oh, and everyone's in love except the poor Lambiosaurus. Guys, don't watch this if you're lonely. Don't watch this if you're lonely, alright? This will just get you upset. Oh no! Okay, impressive on Gorgosaurus for dragging this like three ton Lambiosaurus across. Uh, Alright, good on you, Gorgosaurus. You lift, you lift. I do uh, really like this Gorgosaurus design though. I think in Old Bucket was Despletosaurus, but this one seems like lighter, leaner, um, longer face. Because this is an Albertosaurine rather than a Tyrannosaurine like Despletosaurus. Uh, man, I like those big uh, lacrimal crests. Very iconic. Yeah, I like the design. The wrists are good. It's hard to tell how it's scaled, but it is scaled, which we know of Gorgosaurus. Though maybe there's some feathering. It is interesting that there were feathers on Nanuksaurus. Whoops. There were feathers on Nanuksaurus, which is a Tyrannosaurine. A somewhat close relative still. Uh, but not on Gorgosaurus and Despletosaurus. Which, I don't know to what extent uh, feathering varied between Tyrannosaurs, but it's just an interesting point to note. Okay, so the male is being uh, submissive and breedable. Oh, everybody's happy except the poor incel Lambiosaurus who, love of his life, got shreked up. Got shreked up, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, God, I do like the, I like the lips on this. That mouth is closed and covered. You don't want those teeth sticking out all the time. They'll dry up and get worn out. Oh, and those forward-facing eyes. I don't know, I keep pausing it. I gotta do it for copyright reasons. But I like the forward-facing eyes. Could have given it a binocular vision. Oh, and it has some scars here. So this has seen combat. See combat right here. Oh, poor guy. <laughs> no. Uh, interesting. Why does it keep doing that? Stop doing that. Uh, we have just I want to say normal pupils, or just round pupils, where in other depictions, like in say Prehistoric Kingdom, it has more goat horizontal pupils, which would give it. Um, a wide field of view so it can see more around it and watch out for predators and movement. Um, this is more like something you would see in a large predator like a Tyrannosaurid. I mean, maybe. We, we don't have fossilized eyes, but based on the niche of being an herbivore, it's uh, likely that it had pupils that were horizontal. But not that it's proven or anything. Are you finding love? Oh, run, run, buddy. This is like a Hallmark movie. You gotta run, run to your true love. Right in the end of the movie. Run, run and find her. Find her. Ah, oh, 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 I like that. I like that it's still horizontal when running. That's a how to sort of running mistake. Yes, they can go bipedal and then run. 
but they don't run upright and then run. Uh, they would still be horizontal. Really, the only difference is the position of the arms. They would still be horizontal to the ground, not upright in a kangarooish stance while they're running. So, kudos to you, Dinosauria, or to Dead Sound. Finder. Yes, yes. No, 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 okay, yes, yes. <laughs> no, oh my gosh, no. <laughs> Run past your dead wife. Who needs her? Who needs her? Not me. Good, good on you, Dead Sound, for not having the Gorgosaurus just be a bloodthirsty monster. It cares about its eggs, it's protecting its eggs. It's not like, oh, Lambiosaurus, I need to hunt right now. I need to kill something right now. It cares about its eggs. But anyway, keep keep running, keep running. Find your true love. Sing, sing your heart out. <gasps> there she is. <laughs> there she is. Uh, so you do notice they show sexual dimorphism in Lambiosaurus also, which, um, sexual dimorphism is very difficult to prove in dinosaurs. I don't think there's any dinosaur yet, or, you know, non-avian dinosaur, where scientists agree, like, yes, this is definitely sexual dimorphism. Because um, some Lambiosauruses have a smaller uh, handle on their hatchet and a smaller crest and they take that as the female. Um, maybe, maybe, you just uh, don't know yet, but it's a, it's a hypothesis and it makes for interesting entertainment. Uh, but we, we like envisioning sexual dimorphism in non-avian dinosaurs because it's very obvious in the modern dinosaurs. Um, maybe, maybe. Alright, tell your feelings. Yes, go full Hallmark. I know I'm a prince and you're just a small town girl, but you've made me feel like no other man. Uh, there are too many Hallmark movies that are all the same about a woman finding a prince in Christmas. <laughs> yes, 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 homies, there's hope. This hope. It's enough to make a grown man cry. He got over the other one fast. I don't know what the mourning process is for a Lambiosaurus. And alright, they're happy together. That's good. That's good. Um, alright. <laughs> let's let's close this out here. Okay, so that is the end. Uh I definitely like this. What's this guy's name? David James Armsby? All right, David, you, you hit this one out of the park yet again, yet again. Always just uh, awesome stuff here. I really like this portrayal of the dinosaur park formation. I think um, it gets underrepresented sometimes. Uh, I just, I enjoy seeing it, seeing the Gorgosaurus, the Parasaurolophus, Lambiosaurus, Carithosaurus doesn't appear in a lot of things, and I'm glad it's here. Um, Chasosaurus, whichever Ankylosaurus that was. All of them, just exceptional designs, look beautiful. The environment looks very nice, um, very beautiful. It would have been like a coastal uh, plain off the Western Interior Seaway. About 76-ish million years ago is where we're at right now. So even though we're at the Dinosaur Park formation, um, it doesn't show Styracosaurus. Which also would have been there, and Aspletosaurus. Uh, Aspletosaurus would have lived mostly more in the south, but also up north. Um, because not every dinosaur park dinosaur lived at the same time. I mean, some of them live more in the beginning of it, some of them are more in the middle, and then others towards the end of it. I think this would be uh, more like early middle-ish. Can't give an exact number, like six... 76 would be about right. Uh, we have Lambiosaurus, Carithosaurus, Parasaurolophus all at the same time. Um, so, very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, I think the, the big thesis here, the big main idea was showing uh, males and females coming together to mate. It's interesting that we have different species living in the same herd. I'm not sure. 
if we have evidence for that or if that's creative license, but it's cool. It's an interesting idea. And that would also mean that they need that ornamentation to differentiate which one is which. You have three different Lambiosaurines of the same herd, right? You need to know who you're mating with. Um, but it's cool to show. It's just difficult to prove sexual dimorphism. But it's a fun hypothesis here. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this one. I hope you did too. And next one is the aquatic one. Let's see, what's the next one called? Sea and Sky. This one's about Pteranodon and... Is that Tylosaurus or something? Um, maybe. I don't remember. I saw that a long time ago. I do remember. I like the clacking sounds that the Pteranodons make with their uh, beaks. But, anyways... Remember, if you enjoyed this episode, to please leave a like, subscribe, and then check out my social media. See you next time.